Martin and Wayne are the two worst chess bots on chess.com. So I made them play two chess games to see who is actually the worst on the whole website. And boys, the first game is gonna be the funniest thing that you will ever see. And the second game is gonna be even funnier than that. So you're in for a treat. Let's just jump into it. We have Martin, the god with the white pieces and stinky Wayne with the black pieces. So Martin starts the game off with G3. Very surprising for Martin. We get E5 and Martin Fianchettos. I didn't even know that Martin knows how a bishop moves, but apparently he does. He actually develops his pieces. Now, Wayne brings out the queen very early. Wayne is kind of like Nelson, except he doesn't know how to play chess. We get b3, we get knight f6, and we get knight to c3. I mean, so far, you wouldn't know it's the worst chess bots playing. And maybe this queen move kind of gives it away. But look at Martin. Very normal stuff. Develops a piece. Develops another piece. You know, wants to castle maybe. We get bishop to e7. Wayne probably wanting to castle. And now Martin, everything nice that I said about Martin, he kind of takes it back. Because he undevelops the bishop. Yeah, he just go goes back. We get c6. We get rook to b1, which is so stupid. Like, what is the rook to b1, dude? We get queen to g4. Wanting to put some pressure, you know, near the king. But this could easily be remedied by just pushing a pawn, developing a bishop, developing a knight. Doesn't really scare a normal chess player. We get rook to b2 from Martin. Martin fianchettos the rook, even though that's not how rooks work. Dude, you, your bishop is supposed to be there, not your... Dios mio, he will never learn. And now Wayne goes for the kill. C5. Wanting to bring more pieces into the action. Wanting to show Martin who's the real boss. And Martin kind of just doesn't care. H4. Now, Wayne thinks that pawns take sideways. So he gets scared and he moves the queen back, which is kind of stupid. And now Martin unfianchettos the rook, going rook to b1. I have no idea. Like, it's move like 10, bro. And like, all of his pieces are on the back rank. They're, they've done nothing. Now we get queen to f5, threatening checkmate. Right, this is made, boys, okay? Now, the game is equal because white can develop some pieces, white can get in the game, white can stop checkmate, and there's a few ways to stop checkmate. I mean, you can play e3, you can put a knight here, I mean, you can even put your rook on h2. And Martin does that. He plays... Oh, he plays rook to h3. Oh. And the wrong, wrong squ... Oh. Yeah, Martin gets checkmated in like 11 moves by the dumbest bot on chess.com. Like, you guys are the same rating and you got checkmated in 10 moves. How? But boys, the second game, Martin wants his revenge, okay? He had enough bullying today. So now we get our goat with the black pieces, Martin. And Wayne starts the game off pretty normally, I guess. E4, I mean, we get E5. It looks like a standard opening. Of course, the queen goes out very early. Now, Martin, as I said in this YouTube short, learned how to defend against Scholar's Mate and these early queen attacks. And Martin just brings out his queen. I mean, not the best move here, but, hey, you know, I would like to see knight of 6 but you can't blame the guy. He's stopping checkmate, at least. We get D4, and Martin kicks out the queen. I was surprised that Martin even knows the queen is there. Like, he kicks it out. Queen takes with check, we get a queen trade, like, very early, and Wayne has doubled pawns. I had no idea how this game would go, because we have no queens on, like, move 5. So, you know, some pieces get developed, we get a knight developing, attacking this pawn, we get another knight developing, defending that pawn, pretty standard stuff, and now the knight jumps in. I was like, is Martin gonna go for a tactic? Bro, no shot. I was thinking that there's no way that Martin sees knight takes c2 and then takes the rook, like, impossible. But, I mean, Wayne just kinda gives him a tempo, and Martin goes for it. Tactics, boys. Look at this. He's gonna win the rook in the corner. King to d1, best move, because that knight has no escape squares now after he takes the rook. And Martin here plays, um, a6. Yeah, he just plays a6. What the hell is Martin doing? Why play a6 there, dude? What? If you wanna know what he plays the next move, he plays a5. <laughs> What is Martin on? Now, Wayne gets scared. He He's like, he, yo, dude, I don't want him to be the only one pushing flank pounds. So he plays h3. I guess he's going for a flank pound push of his own. We get bishop to e7. And Wayne just starts traveling with the king. Look at this. The king is going to the center. I have no idea what Wayne is doing here. He's up a piece, but like... Why is your king on d3, bro? Is he playing the extended bond cloud against Martin? Is this how disrespectful Wayne is? Like, what is happening? Then Martin plays a4. He's just pushing the a pawn, bro. He has no intentions of stopping ever. Oh, we get king to e3. The king kind of starts making, you know, his way back to e1, which is kind of, I guess, better than what, what it was doing on d3. Now we get bishop to f8. Martin just undevelops his bishop, which... Why? I, I guess he maybe wants to go for g6, but that's stupid. And, you know, we get some pieces shuffling, we get some pieces moving. Martin starts pushing the h-pawn now, okay? And now Wayne is like, oh, I'm gonna go attack that h-pawn, even though it's defended by the rook and the pawn. 
Uh, but Martin is like, oh, my pawn is under attack. I'm just gonna push the pawn. Like, this is, I, I'm thinking this is how the bots are thinking, bro. Like, there's no way that this is not their logic. And now we get bishop to c4, we get pawn to c5 attacking the knight. And by some miracle, Wayne actually sees that his pieces are hanging. So he actually moves the knight. You get knight a7, like, they're just developing some pieces. Wayne is still moving the king around like a bozo. And now Martin develops a rook like a bozo, which, why would you do this to a rook? I don't know why beginners like to push these flank pawns and then get their rooks in the game, like, very early. Wayne still continues walking the king. I thought he was gonna manually cast and go this way but no he goes back to d3 now we get b6 wayne takes his knight is under attack but pawns do not take forward so he moves the knight back anyways just to be safe we get rook to h8 martin brings the rook back because yeah, too much development dude I, having active pieces no i just want the rook back where it was wasting a move king to e2 the king might finally go back to e1 rook to h7 now martin moved the rook for the third time to a square where it does absolutely nothing now we get knight takes a4 which is uh, it, it's a move you know you take a pawn it doesn't really hurt anything except it does because my goat martin has been setting this up the whole game okay he's been seeing through the lies and he plays b5 attacking two pieces at the same time defended by the rook now Wayne just decides to go back with the knight and Martin actually takes the bishop holy god I mean Martin actually saw tactic and went through with it I'm actually impressed now of course you could take this pawn but Wayne has some different ideas he plays rook to d1 we get rook to h8 and now the pieces kind of start moving pawns start pushing now Martin actually wants to attack this pawn in the center maybe even win it at some point you know his rook gets attacked and here I get scared because I know from experience that Martin has a blind spot for pawns. He just doesn't see when a pawn is attacking something. And your boy was kind of right. Yeah, the rook is completely hanging there. Now, my dear viewers, I would like to ask you to predict. Is Wayne going to take this rook or not? Nope. <laughs> And is Martin gonna move this rook? Yes, he's actually gonna take the pawn. It only took him one move, okay? That's pretty good for the goat. He's a bit slow, he has kids. And now the knight takes the pawn, and now Martin only has to move the rook. Come on, Martin, you can move the rook. I, I believe in you. Wrong rook, R wrong rook. The, the rook is <laughs> the rook is hanging, but, but of course Wayne doesn't take it, okay? And the rook is still gonna hang because well yeah the rook is just gonna chill there in the center the pieces are gonna develop pawns are gonna push this rook is just gonna hang there okay if i had one dollar for every rook that martin hung in this game i would probably have like 15 dollars you know i could get a burger i could get a, a drink you know but yeah the rook is just, just gonna chill here okay not gonna move move the other rook don't move this one martin okay this one is completely safe okay rook to g1 perfectly fine oh Martin actually moves the rook. And at this point, I was really hopeful because Martin is up a pawn. The position is actually not looking good for white. So let's see how Martin wins this, okay? But Wayne goes to attack Martin's pawn and blunders a knight instantly. Now, as we saw, the rook was hanging for about 10 moves. So is Martin gonna see a knight being hung by a bishop? Well, of course he is. He's the goat, baby. Okay, now Martin is up a piece, dude. The bishop goes back. The rook goes to defend this bishop. And now Wayne starts pushing this pawn. And keep an eye on this pawn because this pawn is going to be a game changer, okay? Now there's a pawn hanging in the center. Of course, you can take with the rook. You can take with the bishop. It doesn't really matter. And uh, Martin just goes back. Not a, not, a ter not a terribly losing move. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? We get some pieces moving. And Martin psh, snaps the pawn. Now, you could have taken the pawn with check. You could have taken with the bishop and, you know, uh, threatened this cover check or something. But Martin wasn't interested in that. He wanted to wind up the bishop. You know, he, he went back to go forward. He, he he wound up the punch and now the knight jumps in okay now you're so winning at this point that you can even sack this rook for the knight it's not the best move but like i mean at this point after takes takes and takes you have nothing to worry about and you're still up you know plus two points of material this should be an easy win for anybody okay but you know martin doesn't want a simple game okay he wants an intense game this knight here is actually doing a pretty good job, you know, guarding the square for promotion. The only problem is this bishop can also go backwards. Martin starts moving the king, and you know, white starts bringing the king too. Now, we get f5, there's a chance for en passant, and Wayne does the unthinkable and doesn't take en passant. Instead, he develops a bishop, attacking a pawn. Uh, a decent, but en passant way better. Of course, it's forced as well. And we get some pieces shuffling. Nothing really important happening here. You know, bishops going back and forth, rooks going back and forth and now the pawn pushes boys 
And this is where it starts to get scary for Martin, because as I said, Martin has a weak spot for pawns. He just doesn't know that they're on the board. Now, of course, Wayne blunders a knight here, which is, uh, you know, not a good thing to do. But, I mean, the pawn is going to keep pushing, boys, okay? The rook goes back, he brings in the king. Now, Martin is in a bit of a tricky situation, okay? This pawn can promote, and you could take with the bishop, but after rook takes, your king is in check, and you're going to lose the knight behind. But Martin has a way to remedy this. He can move the king to the seventh rank, so if white promotes, he can take with the bishop and now after rook takes it's not check so he can move the knight somewhere okay he can't move it here and here because he would lose the knight and this would probably save the game for martin but this does not happen instead he moves the rook in front of the damn bishop so the bishop cannot take what is what are you doing and now wayne doesn't promote he doesn't promote. Now you can move your rook to c8, guarding the promotion square with the bishop and with the rook. And this is completely winning for Martin now. Completely winning. Instead, Martin goes with the other rook. What is he smoking, dude? What is he smoking? Now, Wayne is completely winning. But he doesn't queen anyways. <laughs> Please, Rook F1. You have a pawn that's one square away from promotion. Nothing can stop it. But not only that, Martin actually takes the bishop off the diagonal, wanting to attack this rook. But now nothing can guard this promotion square, okay? Now, Wayne can promote again with check. And he actually does it. He promotes with check. And the worst thing is, like, Martin is just dead lost. He's not even up material anymore. So, you know, he blocks with the rook. The queen goes in here, hitting the bishop, hitting the pawn. It's looking very scary for Martin. The rook moves to the corner. Now, that's a free rook. You can take it with both pieces. You can take it with the queen, you can take it with the rook. There's mate and three on the board. There's a bishop hanging for Martin. Everything is falling apart. So, if you can take a rook, if you can take a bishop, if you can mate, what do you do? You take a pawn. Okay, it's mate on five still. Doesn't really matter. The king moves. And now, of course, you take the rook with check, probably. You know, you, you have a mate on four. Very easy mate here. But no, he uh, plays king to f3. Yeah, he plays king to f3 in this position. When he has mate, when he has a rook king, he plays king to f3. Now, Martin being super smart, seeing that his bishop is hanging, seeing that his rook is hanging. Now, you could play a move like this, which is check, you know, guarded by this pawn, defends the rook in the corner. It kind of saves the game for Martin. It's not mate anymore, at least. But no, Martin brings the other bishop all the way to the corner, making it super passive and still blundering mate. Now we finally get rook takes, okay, which is, I guess, fine. The king has to move. And boys, I mean, Wayne brings the artillery. Okay, he loses a rook, but that doesn't really matter because Wayne has mate on the board. And is the 250 bot gonna find mate after taking the bishop? Well, unfortunately, he is. After a lot of shuffling of the pieces, look at this. Just look at this, boys. Bishop to d2. Bishop blocks, and bishop takes c3 check. Martin got checkmated by a damn bishop, bro, while Wayne's queen is hanging. Like, this is such a disrespectful checkmate. But, boys, we find out Martin is officially the worst chess bot on chess.com. But, boys, if you want to see the worst chess game ever played, watch my 100 elo friend play Patrick Star's bot in chess. That is the absolutely lowest elo game that you could ever see, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Bye.